نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدنا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأمر أهلك بالصلاة واستبر عليها لا نسألك رزقا نحن نرزقك والعاقبة للتقوى وقال تبارك وتعالى في مقام آخر يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Respected elders, brothers, mothers and sisters, youngsters Alhamdulillah we are sat here in this blessed place On a Saturday to be here is a challenge itself Many of our youngsters will be busy watching TV or football commentary so many other things but for you to be here is just amazing and it's very rewarding and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will come put that forward to the noble angels you said not to create this human being this creation and they will commit bloodshed they will commit murder and they will do all these vice and evil but look at them they are sitting in my house that's why the Prophet sallallahu says مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِّن بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَ سُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشْيَتُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَى That whenever, that's why I want to explain to you how lucky and fortunate all our brothers and sisters who have come today, how lucky and privileged and honored we are to be in the house of Allah. So the Prophet is saying whenever a group of people assemble, they converge, they attend and they are here for what reason? To listen to the dars of the Quran, to listen to the recitation of the Holy Quran. So what will happen is Illa Nazalat Sakina. Allah will descend his sakina, tranquility, serenity, peace on that gathering. So at this moment of time you should feel that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is descending. He's revealing that, sending that down. Nazalat alayhim sakina wa ghashiyatum rahma And the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enshrouded and enveloped that gathering. Wa haffatumul malaika And the angels, the noble creation of Allah, the angels, they are also here. And as I said, wa dhakarahum Allah fi man inda And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning about each and every one of us by name in front of the angels. So it's not something small, petty. We need to realize nowadays the problem we have is we, because we don't see anything t tangible, we don't see anything in front of our eyes. When a person works from Monday to Friday and at the end of the week he gets some money, he looks at it and he thinks he's got something. Here, when we're going to go out of this place, we'll be thinking, did we benefit anything or we could have watched football, we could have done this or that. Because we don't see anything tangible, we don't see anything visible in front of our eyes. That's why what we think is no we start to have doubt, are we really going to get something or not? This is why you call Iman Bil Ghayb. The Iman on the unseen. The Sahaba Ikram, they had that Yaqeen. That it is, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, is surely going to happen. It reminds me of the incident of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He says that every night when I went to sleep, I never ever thought I will wake up in the morning. I never had Yaqeen that I will wake up, I might die. Because when we sleep, what dua do we read? What's the dua? The dua that we read. Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Allah, by your name I am dying. And by your name I will be raised. I will wake up. I will be alive again. So basically, because I am dying with Allah's name, I'm not sure if I'm going to wake up. If Allah doesn't wake me up, if Allah doesn't revive me again, I'm not going to be uh, alive. So he says this is to happen every night. But one particular night, I knew I will wake up the next night. When was that? When our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said to Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, the day he was migrating to Medina Munawwara, he said, Oh Ali, you sleep on my bedding. And in the morning after waking up, you distribute and you give out all the amana, all the trust to the people, then come and join us. 
because due to Prophet sallallahu saying that because Allah's Prophet sallallahu is saying that through wahi revelation so that's yaqeen that's certitude so he had that yaqeen that I am going to wake up tomorrow morning Allahu Akbar so we need to create that yaqeen Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu says if we see Jannat and Jahannam it's not going to increase our iman because the Prophet sallallahu whatever he said Alhamdulillah we got it to the optimum level so we need to realize the reward and we need to visualize it because nowadays coming to the masjid has become a burden for us because we don't see the reward we don't have that conviction we don't have that yaqeen we don't have that certitude if the imam sahab here or the masjid uh, the responsible people if they said okay everybody who's going to be attending al hidayah masjid from today every salah time they're going to attend and when they leave the masjid they're going to be getting five pound as a gift daily each salah five pound so that's 25 pound in a day in a week 25 times 7 how much is it you should know your calculations 175 that's a wholesome wage modest wage you will be thinking to yourself subhanallah i would rather stay in the masjid all the time so isn't our salah worth five pound what mentality have you got so we need to change our mentality of understanding the reality of life this world is just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying I'lamu anna dunya wala. this life know that this life is just play and amusement that's why Khaja Azizul Hassan Majzub rahmatullahi alayhi what did he say so beautiful words tujhe pehle bachpan ne barsun khilaya juwani ne fir aake majnoon banaya burhape ne fir aakar kya kya sataya ajal tera kar degi bilkul safaya jagaji lagane ki dunya nahi ibrat ki jaahe tamasha nahi how beautifully says that in childhood what happened is a person is engrossed in amusement and entertainment when he is in his adolescence when he is a youth he is completely pagal he's completely majnoon insane that's why in arabic there's a proverb we say as shababu shu'batu min al junoon that youth is a branch of insanity you see the youth the hairstyle they have the necklaces they have the trousers torn trousers they have the fashion these are the fashion nowadays there was a youngster who came into my office and he stopped his car in front of the shop and he kicked the door to close it then he banged his head on the lamppost he had necklace on and he comes in mm, mm. I said Allah give me your tongue speak what is this so he's moving his head around and he's hitting punching the wall and this and that I said what's wrong with you you're a human being Allah has made you the best of the creation what are you doing that's the mentality so then when a person becomes old he says when a person becomes old then diabetes and blood pressure and cholesterol and kidney problem and heart problems and all these other issues now it is even youngsters get these now you don't need to go to old age you see all the youngsters you, know, you ask them oh i'm on insulin i'm on this i said you're only in your 20s what's happened you no know, i have sweets every day so i asked a youngster because i can't stay away from sweets so i have to have one can of coke on a daily basis seven days every day without it i can't not only one i have three four times every time i have something i have to have a can of coke so on a daily on a weekly basis at least 30 cans and my these chocolates i have to have at least four or five pounds of chocolates every day so he's completely lost his kidneys and he's a young person i said i can't stay away from it i said you're gonna die you're gonna go into your grave in that situation he goes but i can't stop this it's an addiction this is the mentality Ajal tera kar degi bilkul then death is gonna come that's it finish i just come back from a janaza i just come back from a janaza so the janaza was actually after zohar so when the brother phoned me, my student phoned me from Huddersfield, Mala Atif, and he said, my father has passed away. It was sudden death. It's completely okay. He spoke to me in the daytime, and he said, I'm taking my father to, uh, for radiotherapy and all the rest of it. I said, okay. Um, and then at nighttime, this happened. So he said, uh, Mufti Sahib, the janazah is going to be at half past one after Zohar. I said, but I got program Al Hidayah. So he said, okay, I really want you to perform the janazah. So I said, uh, but this is going to be very difficult so he phoned me back subhanallah within a few minutes he managed to convince all the people and he said okay we can have you at 12 then 
after the janaza uh, he could just come straight to al hira alhamdulillah this is what exactly what happened those hundreds of people there in his janaza at 12 o'clock and subhanallah i was just saying to the people they told me to say a few words before i perform the janaza i said my brothers who are listening and sisters who are listening remember idha wada'ta janazatan ila al qubur fa'lam annaka ba'daha mahmul when you are carrying a janaza a coffin towards the grave then remember you're the next one to be carried we have to have that mentality what if it's my turn am i ready have i prepared hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu do your accounts before your accounts are done are we ready regardless what degree we have the question in the grave will be mar rabbuka who is your lord ma dinuka what is your religion man hadha rajul ladhi bu'itha ilayhi who is this person who has been sent towards you regardless of your degree qualification your expertise your competence in this world the question in the hereafter will be the first question will be awwalu ma yuhasabu bihi al-abdu yawm al-qiyamati as-salah this is going to be about salah namaz are we ready to not so this is the reason we have these programs so these are reminders for us that where are we going our life unfortunately like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is actually about the agnostic and the atheist those people who don't believe in the existence of god what do they say ma hiya illa hayatuna dunya namutu wa nahya wa ma yuhlikuna illa ad that we live and we die nothing finishes as good time this is what the atheists believe in evolutionists believe in and majority of the people in the last census when it was written down do you believe in a divine religion 14 million that's 20% of the uk population said we don't believe in any god that's a big percentage in other words they don't follow christianity judaism hinduism buddhism islam nothing like that just atheists and that's just building momentum is increasing on an alarming rate people are becoming even so called muslims they are leaving islam and they are becoming atheist evolutionist vegan these kind of things and subhanallah we're not worried we're not concerned about it that's why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said satakunu fitna fitna will come trials and tribulation challenges will come samma bakma amya three was used these fitna these trials and challenges will make a person deaf dumb and blind deaf dumb and blind then yusbihu musliman wa yumsi kafira in the morning he'll be a believer in the even he'll be a disbeliever wa yumsi musliman wa yusbihu kafira in the evening was a muslim in the morning woke up he left islam why yabi'u deenahu bi'aradhin min ad-dunya he has sold his deen religion his faith for paltry things a petty things of the dunya just small thing happens oh, i don't like islam yeah islam is like this no it's, this is not right immediately people reject it so this is so dangerous and this is what's happening now so we need to make sure we preserve our deen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked by a sahabi can you teach me something that i could do i don't need to ask anybody after this the qul amantu billahi thumma astaqim say i believe in allah then stay steadfast so we need to stay steadfast we need to make sure our children are steadfast ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara save yourself and save your family members from the hell fire is it sufficient that i come to the masjid i perform my salah what is happening to my children so each and every one of us because allah kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi each and every one of us we are responsible we are shepherd and will be asked about our subordinates those who are under our care so all the children will be asked did we give them the tarbiyah did we give them the true knowledge of deen did we do that or not this is going to happen nowadays our children they don't know even how to talk you go into the bathroom and suddenly somebody knocks on the door your child 15 year old child is there son is there and you're worried in the bathroom you're thinking oh no my friend is here will he do salam will he tell him to come in or will he just not even open the door if he does yeah what what this is the kind of mentality no salam nothing at all oh my father is in the bathroom you have to just wait you know this basic etiquette that okay uncle mashallah assalamu alaikum how are you uncle mashallah come inside sit down my father i'll just inform him these basic things we don't know because we haven't taught him how beautifully in the arabic subhanallah this proverb just comes in my mind 
what does he say what is tarbiya what is nurturing and it's beautiful words so at-tarbiyatu an ta'rifa mata tatakallam at-tarbiyatu an ta'rifa mata tatakallam i wish you could comprehend it in arabic it's so beautiful what is tarbiya what is nurturing what is upbringing what is raising of children that they recognize when to speak our youngsters don't know when to speak parents are talking senior are talking they're not bothered they're playing with the mobile or they're just ignoring or they just interfere or interject at least this is tarbiya this is a basic tarbiya at tarbiyatu an ta'rifa mata tatakallam they recognize they understand when to speak because they don't know when to speak they will start speaking they're talking amongst themselves so these are basic etiquette basic ada then it continues al akhlaqu an tastami ali may yatakallam what is akhlaq what is character an tastami that he listens attentively to whoever speaking that's akhlaq we so bad akhlaq we so bad in character that we can't just tolerate in your somebody else speaking no you just want to interject listen carefully ata ibn raba the great tabi'i the teacher of the great imam imam abu hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala he says that when somebody used to come and speak to me and listen to this it's just amazing that when they used to speak i used to be listening so attentively and this person is mentioning a hadith which i have narrated this before he was even born and he's thinking he's teaching me but i listen to it so attentively and the person is thinking oh even ata bin raba is learning a lesson from me so when you are actually talking to somebody when you are listening to someone then you need to keep that focus you can't just turn your face away you need to have that eye contact you need to be nodding your head sometime so he knows that you are listening attentively but now what is our youngsters mm, mm, mm. they play with the mobile at the same time the father was talking to the son and after finishing his beta did you get this what i've just told you so his uh, father what did you say so the father said to the son it seems that it is gone through one ear and it's come out of the other ear because yeah father that's right unfortunately that's what happened the father says that's good my son a time will come it will not even go into the first ear he's not going to even listen in the first place and this is what's happening in this day and age so ata ibn rabba he has taught us the art of listening and tastami listen the word tastami one is samia yasmu to listen tastami if you al kathratul huruf tadullu ala kathratil maani the more letters you have in the arabic the more intense meaning it has so and tastami doesn't just mean listen it means listen attentively with dedication with devotion with proper concentration so and tastami ali may yatakallam listen to them attentively this is the basic adab so ata ibn rabba used to listen like that even though he knows he said even before he was even born i performed his mother and father's marriage and he's narrating this hadith to me and i'm listening look over the quran is saying allahu akbar in surah luqman allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the words the wisdom of luqman alayhi salatu wassalam wala tusa'ir khaddaka lin nas wala tamshi fil ardi maraha don't turn away your cheek lin nas from the people he didn't say lil muslim he said lin nas for any human beings whether muslim non muslim speaking to you be polite speak to them have your face turned towards them so in the entire life in the whole life complete life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he never ever once he turned his face away even from his enemies from his foes just imagine the akhlaq he had we need to embed and implant and ingrain this akhlaq and character and this conduct and behavior in our children so what did i say al akhlaq wa an tastami ali may yatakallam then he continues wal adab alla tuqati may yatakallam what is adab etiquette that when someone speaking don't interrupt don't say i know it that's why he says that if somebody is saying the right a lot of people like come to me and they say mufti sami bukhari sharif says this do you know this hadith i said come brother we just narrate it then so the person next to me no mufti sami you've been teaching bukhari for 20 years you must know this hadith i got of course i know it but i just want to make him happy he's thinking that he's narrating it to me the first time so let me listen to it 
So we have to have that mentality. A lot of people are narrating hadith day and night, they mentioning masla to me. What is that? Do you know this masla? Basic masla about salah or this and that. So I said, mashallah, it's very good. Mashallah, Allah increase your knowledge. They become happy. Just with the intention of making them happy, listen. So the point here is, what we need to do is do the therapy of the children properly. Because the problem we have, let me tell you a few points that how we can actually improve the tarbiya, improve our nurturing of children. The biggest problem we have is, the first thing is, we have lowered the bar. So what has happened now is, if a child does something wrong, he swears at another boy, he doesn't, he wastes food, and he's left the food on the plate and he doesn't want to eat. So, someone says, look, you know, your child has so much. We lowered the bar. He's, he's a child, just leave him. He's 15 years old, 16, when is he going to grow up? I said, when I was talking to the sister, I said, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when she was very young. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he passed away, she was only 18. And she taught the world. I say about Muhammad bin Qasim, he was only 17 years old when he conquered Sindh, Hindustan. Usama bin Zayd radiallahu anhu, he was a teenager when he was made the commander-in-chief under whom Abu Qas Siddiq and Umar radiallahu ta'ala, they were working. So we have lowered the bar so much, the bacheh. Your child is 15, 16 years old. You're not waking him up for Fajr Salah. But che, chude, but che, they, they have to get up for school and this and that. And he, they have gone to sleep. They're very uh, tired. We've lowered the bar so much. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is saying, Muru auladakum bis salati wa abna usabi sinin. Order your children to perform salah from the age of seven. Was he, he rahmatullahi alam? Why are we so gentle and so kind and merciful? That's not being kind and gentle and merciful. We are heading them, we are driving them, we are pushing them towards Jahannam. That's what we're doing. One mother asked the Shaykh, the Shaykh, I can't get my children up for Fajr Salah. Because at that time they have, they are very tired. So listen to this. My brothers and sisters who are listening, listen to this attentively. What did the Shaykh say? The Shaykh said, why if there's a fire in your house? Are you going to wake up your children? Because of course, he goes, no, you're not going to wake up. They're fast asleep. He's going to disturb the sleep. He goes, no, what are you talking, Sheikh? Are you, are you a fool or something? I'm not going to wake up. The, the fire is going to get hold of them. It's going to kill them. It's going to burn them. But subhanallah, you're so worried about the worldly fire that you're going to drag them out. What, what about the fire of Jahannam? If they don't read Fajr Salah, they will end up there, which is 70 times more hot. Are you understanding brothers? If we can get that, that's what I'm saying. We have to visualize and we have to take it serious. We have to walk the talk. We can't just be thinking to yourself, okay, we'll listen. Because the problem is I lecture around the world and I say the same thing to everybody. We can't just listen and say, wow, it was a very good talk. Yeah, yeah. But what, what's the practical side of it? Are we going to make a change? Is it going to happen or is it going to be okay? I'll think about it tomorrow. Save yourself from procrastination. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll become a better person tomorrow. I'll start my salah tomorrow. I'll wait for Ramadan. It doesn't come. For the Hadith who passed away to it, he hasn't come. Every day we're seeing deaths, we're seeing funerals, we're seeing janaza every day. Isn't this an opening eye? It's not going to open our eyes, it's not going to open our minds. So this is the point that we have to get into our minds. So the first point, what has happened is we lowered the bar. We have to get that. No, no. Beta, you're five years old now. You have to read namaz with me. Stand next to me. Copy me. Just follow the postures. Because if the Prophet ﷺ has said to read salah at the age of seven, you can't tell him on his birthday, okay, you're seven today, mashallah, the Prophet ﷺ has told you, you to read your salah. He's going to say, what is salah? So what does that tell us? That before seven, when he's five or six, you need to start teaching him. This is the way you read your salah today. This in the morning, this is Fajr. Then in the afternoon, this is Zohar. Late in the afternoon, this is Asr. After sunset, that's Maghrib. Before you go to sleep, that's Isha. We need to explain to our children in that way before the age of seven. So when they get to the age of seven, 
they know how to read all the five time prayers. They know the Surah Fatiha, they know the Durush Sharif, they know the Tashahud, they know the, uh, the Tasbih, and all the rest of the du'as and prayers that they need to read inside the Salah. That's at the age of seven, they should have all that ready. Then the Prophet, what did he say? That what the Ribuhuma Alayha Huma Abana wa Ashisini. Order your chani, be harsh, be strict with your children when they are ten years old. If they're still not reading, you have to be disciplined them. You have to be stern with them. You have to be on top of it. Chal hasn't become balig yet, he hasn't become mature yet. Responsibility hasn't come over him. But the Prophet already is doing the tarbiyah, nurturing. We haven't done that. If every parent who's listening to my talk, if we all take that on board, our children, subhanallah, they would be very obedient, very practicing. So this is the way we need to take it forward. We need to raise the bar. That's number one. Number two, listen to this. We have lost the village. What does that mean? We have lost the village. What does that mean? Before, when we were young, if we did something wrong outside, straight away, we, you know, before we even reach home, the information has come home. Apke beta ye, us usko kali di. Ya sona, that child, there was a fight there, they start. Everybody were concerned. This is my Batija, this is my Batiji, this is my nephew, this is my niece. Everybody thought this is the children, the village. So everybody realized, no, that's my brother, that's my sister, that's my nephew, that's my niece. So I don't want it for my child, why should I want it for another person's child? So everybody were concerned, we lost the village. What now what happens? You say, first of all, you dare say it. And if you do say it, eh, you got grudge, you're jealous of my children. Why? My child is an angel, he's so good. This is the mentality we've got, we lost the village. So if, like, leave alone this, when the teacher in the maktab, madrasa tells, your child is for, no, my child, never, no, no, no. no. I caught a boy, red-handed stealing. The father, no, no. You know, Mufti Sahib, you're lying. My son is always telling the truth. I caught him red-handed, brother. Now you don't accept me as a teacher, as a principal, then you are telling me that you are believing your child to be innocent. He hasn't stolen. I caught him red-handed. You have destroyed your child forever. You destroyed him. So we all lost the village. So we don't accept anybody else making any negative points about your family. Because you are thinking to yourself, no, no, this person got grudge against me, he's got jealousy against me, he doesn't like me, he doesn't want any progress. So nobody is helping each other out. There is no cooperation. So what is happening is, your child, your son, your girl, your daughter, they are committing evil outside and people are seeing, they're just ignoring each other. But nobody's stopping each other. So we have lost the village. So this thing we have to get into mind. If we want to nurture our children and get them to be pious, get them to be righteous, get them to be obedient, get them to be kind and gentle to this, uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respect the elders, show mercy to the youngsters, then we have to make sure that we do the proper tarbiyah. If somebody comes, Jazakallah khair brother, thanks for telling me, inshallah ta'ala, you know, it's very good. Please continue telling me if my son does anything wrong, my daughter does anything wrong. This is the approach that we should be taking. So we lost the village. We need to make sure that we work together. That's number two. Number three, we have this reliance on shortcuts. Because nowadays everything, you know, broadband, you have to be very fast. So, you give him the child, you know, this mobile is so, you know, it's iPhone 5, people are on iPhone 11 and 12 and 13 now, what are you doing, you know, that's it. I want something more quicker. So, the food, you know, you just order the food, the child, he can't just, you know, be patient. When is the food is not coming, why, why is it taking so, it's supposed to be fast food, it's slow food. They call the fast food the slow food now, they said, you know, you should be here within two minutes. So he can't just stay still in the car. You've just ordered the food, okay, wait. So you always relying on shortcut. You know, you can go this way, for example, there's a road there, you have to, so if you want to cross safe, you have to go to the other side, zebra crossing on the other traffic lights there. But no, no, I want to come directly. No, teach the child, no, no, you have to go this way, it's more safer. So reliance on shortcut all the time. I want this, 
I want it now. This mentality, no. You have to learn patience. You have to learn patience. No reliance on shortcuts. They have to learn how to be patient. They have to know that there are people in the world, you are wanting fast food, there are people in the world, they don't even get water, fresh water. So reliance on shortcuts, we need to take that off. We need to teach our children patience. Number four, what happens is we have the fear for ch of the children. No, they, they'll be putting all these tantrums, they will be doing this, they will be screaming and shouting. So the child, you take him to the shopping mall and he wants that particular thing. And he starts screaming. So you say, okay, just keep quiet, I'll give it to him. So that child has learned that if I need anything, I just need to scream. I need to just start shouting. I need to start crying. If something is not right for him, no, no. Whatever happens, you can cry all day long, you're not going to get it. Teach him a lesson once for all. This is very important. You just a child, two, three year old child. You know, you got the milk in the red cup. He wants it in the yellow cup. So you've already poured it. You're giving it to him. And now, no, Ammu, I want it in the yellow cup. So now, just to make the child happy, he's the child coming back all the way to the kitchen again. Why? Why? What are you teaching your child? That I can get away with anything that I want. My mother has to listen to me. My father has to listen to me. My elder brother, sister have to listen to me. This mentality is wrong. This mentality is wrong. Fear of the children, this has caused the children's tarbiyah to be destroyed. So we need to get that in our mind. That no, I have already poured the water in the red cup. You have to drink it from there. You can't. I'm not going to do anything. The child, you just fed the child. He's going to sleep now. After one hour, he says, I'm feeling hungry. You fed the child. Now he's saying, I'm feeling hungry. Okay, now you are disturbing your sleep. Fear of the children. You are prioritizing. It's good to prioritize, give them food and let them go sleep early. That's no problem. But now you just fed. Why is he? You're making him adopt these bad habits. You just fed him. After one hour, can I have some Snickers, please? Can I have some Twix, please? Can I have this or can I have that? You've just fed that child. You're spoiling his habit. So it's very important that no, you go to sleep, only time you're going to eat in the morning now. If you're hungry, it doesn't matter. You're not going to die. You have to be straightforward. You have to be candid. You have to be very clear. So this problem that we have, subhanAllah, Islam has taught us everything. We need to do the tarbiyah of our children in a proper way. So I will just briefly say, what did I say? Number one, we have lowered the bar. We need to take it up. You're 10 years old now, you have to come to the masjid. There's no choice. No, you better chota bachai. This problem, this is the easy way of taking out. I've seen, you know, parents feeding the child with their hands. The child is 10, 15 years old. Why can't he eat with his own hands? Why are you so lazy? So this is the point. The child, subhanAllah, from the age of 2-3, he should eat with his own hands. The Prophet وسلم, said to Amr ibn Salam anhu, he says, My hand is to be always scattered everywhere in the plate. So the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Ghulam, Sammilla, wa kul bi yamini, wa kul mimma yali, O beta, O son, say Bismillah. He's teaching a child who's only 2-3 years old. Take that as a lesson. And we think our children are young. No, no, he's only six. Only six? At that time, he should be able to do everything himself. So he's saying, the Prophet ﷺ is teaching Amr ibn Salam radiallahu ta'ala that Sammillah, say Bismillah. So when he start the food, what's the dua we read? Bismillahi wa barakatillah. So read the dua. Wa kul bi yaminik. Eat with your right hand. Wa kul mimma yali. can eat from the area, from that side of your plate that is near you. Look at the beautiful teaching. He's teaching that to who? A child who's three, four years old. Allahu Akbar. So we have lowered the bar. We need to raise the bar. So nowadays, you know, you ask the child, he's not a child anymore. How old are you? Sister, how old are you? I'm 25. I'm married? No, I'm not married. Uh, I'm going to marry when I'm 30. You're going to marry only 30? When are you going to start having a family? When are you going to start living properly? 
The brother comes, you know, son, he's, you know, 25, 30 years old, you know, I'm going to get married at 35 or 40. 35 or 40? Life finishes at 40. So nowadays, what's happening? This mentality. No, no, we've lowered the bar so much. This is the problem that we have. We start to think, no, no, I'm still young, I'm this, that. That's why our society is under 16. Under 16 doesn't have no significance in Islam. What is under 16, over 16? This has got nothing. Islam is bulug and not bulug. Either you're balik or not balik. If you are not balik, you're under the age. So obviously even then, the, as I said, the Prophet ﷺ has taught us that the first thing a person, when he starts speaking, make him learn the name of Allah. When he's seven years old, salah. Ten years old, you have to discipline him. So he will become balik at what age? Any time between 12 and 15. A child, a boy can become balik. A girl can become balik from the age of 19, any time up to 15. So now if the child, girl or boy became balik at the age of 12, he is a mature, he's a man and a woman, not a boy. Islamically, that child is a man and a woman. So now everything that he's going to be doing, he's going to, the Kiram and Katimin are busy writing now. So we've lowered the bar, he's only 15, he's a minor. So if his birthday is tomorrow and he does something at 11.59, no, he did it when he was a minor. Look at the mentality. So we get away with all these, we get away with murder. In Islam, it's completely wrong to have this mentality. So we've lowered the bar, we need to raise the bar. That at this age, this is what you should be doing. Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, at the age of six, he memorized the Quran. Age of six. Mullah was saying about myself, 13, that's nothing. I thought to myself, I'm too old, 13 years old. I should have memorized the Quran much more earlier. But when I came to the UK at that time, there was no Naktab Madrasa like we have al Hidayah, mashallah. We have Hibs class here. There was no such thing as Hibs class. The Hibs class that we had, there was the teacher of ours, Hafiz Jalaluddin Sahib, Damad Barakatuhum. He came as a visitor in 1985. And he started the Hibs class. I was 10 years old. And then he had to leave. So he was going towards the airport. We called the MP. We don't, we don't have no Hibs class teacher. Can you keep him? Can you just give us a reference that we can keep him? They said, okay. We called him back again. That, that time was very easy to do all this. Mashallah, immigration now is so hard. But now, and mashallah, he stayed behind. So basically, it was so hard at that time. But I thought to myself that I have become so old. I'm 13 years old and I've become Hafiz. Imam Shafi, Rahmatullahi, six years old. He was a Hafiz of Quran. At the age of 10, he memorized Mu'atta Malik, which consists of thousands of hadiths by heart. At the age of 14, listen, boys. At the age of 14, how old are you? 14. You're 14 years old. How old are you? 8. So when he was 14, the age of... The names? You can say your name? Harith. Mashallah. Our... Any, Haris. Mashallah. The son of our brother Shahin. So, 14 years old. Listen to this, Haris. Imam Shafi Rahmatullah became Mufti at the age of 14. Mufti. He was the Mufti of Makkah Mukarramah. This is what he called tarbiyah. His mother used to take him to the imams and the muhaddithin to study. Imam Malik, his mother used to take. Imam Bukhari, the mother used to take. The father passed away when he was very young. So the mother looked after and all our mothers were listening. You have a big role to play. All these Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Bukhari, all these big scholars the mother had a very big impact on any, each and every one of them. Imam Malik, rahmatullah, the mother used to make him wear a proper Aba, Pagri, when he was only six, seven years old, and he used to send them to the Imams. Go to this muhaddith, go to this scholar. Because he used to have these study circles, al -Qaz, And achieve the knowledge. So because we have lowered the bar, this is what the problem is. So I'm reminding you again, we have to raise the bar. Number two, we lost the village. We need to assist with each other. With each other. If the teacher, Mullah Ahmad Bismillah Sahib, if he said, okay, my child, your child is like this, so please look into the matter and this and that. No, you're not teaching properly. You always will blame the teacher, you'll blame the institute, you'll blame the committee, you'll blame everybody else. But you don't blame yourself. So, so many, I told the parents, look, you know, in our madrasa, the rule is the children shouldn't have shop back and sides. 
So the children are coming, show back inside, and then when we tell them, look, you know, this will happen, the father comes, father comes, we show back inside as well. And the same Mufti Sahib, this is style nowadays. If the father sees in front of the son, we've lost him. We lost the village. Nobody's cooperating. So there has to be that cooperation. If that's not there, we're not going to get, we're not going to achieve anything. So we lost the village. In those days, Subhan, those were the, the very bad boys who used to smoke. They never used to smoke in front of any senior. They would go behind the wall, go behind you know, the bushes and then they'll smoke like this. And that's just a cigarette. Nowadays, people are openly selling and buying drugs. Hashish, crack, LSD, heroin. You know, so all these things. And nobody's bothered about it. One night I was, uh, I thought to myself, I'll just walk, walk around in our Manigam area. And subhanallah, so now all the youngsters, 15, 16 year old youngsters, all walking around, they're in the cars. And now you go, off this up. What is he doing? Is he patrolling today? So all the youngsters, and stayed away phone. You could see everybody moving around, like, you know, subhanallah. They camouflaged themselves everywhere, hidden through behind this wall, behind that wall. They come into the car. So I knocked on some, uh, some of the youngsters' car. And they're 15, 16, younger than my own children. I said, what are you doing? No, I was feeling hungry. We're just going to go and buy something now. We're going to go to the takeaway. It was 12 o'clock. Didn't your mother feel? I'll speak to your mother. No, 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 no. It's, it's okay. It's not our food. Home food wasn't good. I just want, you know, feeling like to have a pizza, a burger or something. Oh, have you got something else in your car? Can I see? No, no, off this up, please. This is the mentality. Allahu Akbar. So we have, we lost the village. So nobody will dare speak. Let them do whatever they want. We have to change that mentality. If somebody comes and says about your children, accept it, value it, appreciate it. Jazakallah khair for telling me, inshallah ta'ala look into the matter. That was the case in our days, but now we lost it. Number three, what did I say? That we need to make sure that we don't have reliance on short quotes. So they need to learn. Get the water. Mother, can you get some water for me? Why? Why are you ordering the mother for? Can't you just get from, get from your sea and just go and get it yourself? This is the mentality. No, I'm too busy on my mobile. Can you do this? Uh, brother, can you do this? Oh, you'll say to your younger brother. No, you tell the, your son, your daughter. Why are you telling your brother to? You go up yourself and do it. Don't rely on shortcuts. This is what, what this makes a person lazy. That's why the one dua that I tell all the students in the first of the academic year for students to learn, we should all learn this dua. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al ajzi wal kasr. Say it up to me, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al ajzi wal kasri. Beautiful dua. It's in Bukhari Sharif and it's beautiful. We should all read that. And especially our students, especially youngsters. Oh Allah, I ask refuge in you from inability. Like, no, I can't do it. I can't be bothered to do this. So that mentality, no, no, you have to achieve it. Your brother achieved the degree, why don't you achieve it? Your brother become Hafiz, your sister become Hafiz, you have to do it as well. So this inability, no, I'm not too clever to do it. They start, no, no, you have to do it. You have to have a goal, a target. And kasli means laziness. I'm asking refuge in Allah. The Prophet is teaching us that beautiful dua. That I ask refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from inability and from laziness. Because our children are lazy. Look, there was a day when all the children used to be playing outside football, cricket, used to have rounders, baseball, used to have all these other volleyball and uh, uh, the other thing was biking and things like that. Nowadays, all day long, the children are at home on their laptops, on the iPods and iPads and the PlayStation. And that's it, that's what they're doing. And many parents, they appease themselves, You don't know, he's doing everything wrong in the house. In our days, if somebody went to cinema, he said, Astaghfirullah, cinema mein jata hai. This was a situation. That was classed as something very evil. He's committed a murder. That was the situation. In our Dalum very days, a few students went and that's it, they got expelled. That was how serious we used to take it. But now, subhanAllah, you got cinema, everything, all the evil things on your mobile, just touch of a button. You don't need to go out anywhere. So for the parents to be 
happy and appease themselves by saying no mera beta bahar nahi jata ghumta nahi he doesn't go with anybody else outside the bad boys what, who, who, you just find out in the chat room what he doing all the friends that he's made he's committing evil one brother subhanallah he went all the way he made a friend i don't you don't say friend his girlfriend so basically and he went all the way to australia to meet up 24 hour journey so this is the thing this is the problem that we have so what we need to do is don't rely on shortcuts and as i said the fourth thing is fear of our children do you know what our child is going to do he's going to scream he's going to draw all these tantrums and this and that no no let them that said this is the lesson this is a big problem we have this this food you're going to eat today you can't have fast food every day once a week make some rules discipline you can't have food like you know every time no i'm no i don't like this home food no no you have to have home food your mother's cooked that food you know the food that the mother has cooked with bismillah with durood sharif in the state of wuzu so much blessing in that food we don't want to eat that and that food which is cooked by those people they don't even read namaz they don't know if they wash their hands properly and then we are happy to eat that food and that food has got no baraka I personally myself don't like fast food but sometimes you know when somebody puts it forward so you have something you have a bit a bite from it then that that night what happens is I can't you know if I want to write instead of writing 10 page I will just manage to write one page if I want to read five paras I will only manage to read one para so I've seen that throughout my life so I said no brother please we're going to invite me no fast food because that's going to spoil my night because the food has effect what did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say ya ayyuha ar-rusul kulu minat tayyibat wa amalu saliha allahu akbar allah is addressing not you and me allah is addressing the most noble of all creation the prophets and the messengers or messengers eat from wholesome nutritious food wa amalu saliha do good deeds so the scholars of tafsir the commentators mention the correlation the bond the link the relation between the two if you have proper good food that will enable you to do good action you know sir imam shafi rahmatullah alayhi listen to this imam shafi rahmatullah alayhi he invited imam ahmad ibn muhammad these are the two great imams imam shafi rahmatullah was the ustad the teacher of imam ahmad okay so invited imam ahmad ibn muhammad rahmatullah alayhi to his house and imam shafi said to his daughter Oh daughter there's a great imam coming even though he was shagird student he said a great imam is coming so make sure that in hospitality you don't leave anything bring all the best food make sure he's going to stay the night make sure his room bedding everything is right put the water for his uh, tahajjud put the miswak everything prepare everything so imam ahmed al hamal rahmatullah he came they had the food together he stayed the night after fajr they uh, in uh, fajr time they went to Read, uh, read the fajr namaz in the masjid and then off he went imam ahmed ibn rahmatullah ali imam shafi rahmatullah ali came back home and his daughter said abu you said this is a great imam i found three things which is contrary to piety buzurgi you said he's a very pious person and this and that but i found three things which doesn't actually match or blend in with his piety What are these three things? He said, "Okay, obviously." He said, "Okay, tell me." Imam Shafi Rahmatullah Ali is uh, shocked. So she says that you said he is a very pious person, but when he ate, Subhanallah, all the food that he had on his plate and all around him, finish all that. And pious people, Allah wale, you know, Mulvi sab ziyada nahi khate. Sometimes you might, you might not agree with me here, but wo ziyada nahi khate. and he's eaten everything secondly what has happened is he i left the water there for him so basically what has happened he hasn't used that water for his tahajjud so i heard that pious people they read tahajjud salah so the water was left there he hasn't been touched so it seems that he didn't read tahajjud and the third thing that he did was if he didn't do wuzu you know son how did he do his fajr namaz with the wuzu So he didn't do tahajjud and also read fajr without wuzu. That's the most dangerous. That's the most serious one. So he listened to his daughter. He told her off. But 
you know, it was the back of his mind. I need to ask. So next time when he met him, he goes, when he came and, you know, my daughter was saying that I just wanted to just clarify that and find out uh, what actually happened. So he goes, subhanallah, it's good that you asked me, let me tell you. And listen to this. Brothers and sisters, sisters who are listening as well, listen attentively. He says, the food that came in front of me in my present, the Dastar Khan, I could, because these were pious people, he said, I could see Noor and Noor there. Because who's cooked this food? Imam Shafi and Imam Shafi's daughter and the family who are from the family of piety. So uh, whatever I ate, I saw all blessing there. And I knew that if I eat that food, that food will give me energy, it will give me strength, it will give me spiritual strength. For which I could carry out even more good deeds. So I ate all the food and that gave me so much spiritual strength that I stayed awake all night. I didn't go to sleep. I stayed awake till Fajr time without sleeping and at night time Allah gave me so much barakat, blessing that I deduce 400 masail from the Quran and Hadith. Are you understanding? So because I was so engrossed in that and tahajjud, listen, listen to how clever these, how deep these people thought. Because tahajjud is some ibadah which is for myself. And deducing and deducting masail and all these precepts and Quranic injunctions from there to take out Muslim Masail. This is something which will benefit the masses. And when you have these two contradicting each other, or you have which one do you go for? You go for that which will be more beneficial. And in that situation, it was more beneficial that I do that than read my tahajjud. So, what is ibadat al lazim? In Arabic, you say ibadat al lazim, and one is ibadat al muta'addi. Ibadat al lazim is lazim only for myself, it's only restricted to myself. But this deducing masail and taking out extracting Muslim masail from the Quran and the Hadith that is going to benefit all the people and that's why Imam Ahmad ibn Muhammad rahmatullahi alayhi millions of people follow his masail the four imams is one of the great four imams so for this reason I didn't go to sleep and there was no need my wuzu was intact and with that wuzu which I did at Isha time I read the Fajr namaz so there's no need to use that water. Have you understood this? This is what happens if we eat the right kind of food. But we're not eating the right kind of food. Each day, what, what are we doing? Burger after burger. There's so many different burgers are coming out on a daily basis. We have the Naga burner, we have burger, we have the, you know, all this subhanallah. So we have so many different types and, you know, we just want to taste. We'll go to this Shimla first and we'll go to this, uh, you know, uh, Mumtaz, we'll go to Anams, we'll go every time. Like you see the youngsters, I asked some youngsters, they said, we finish our hometown, we're going to the next town now. So we list, we take off every takeaway, every restaurant. So I said, why don't you do that with the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that you have the list and you tick off every sunnah that you do. You want to eat out and then, you know, leave a message on the internet as well. And this, look at the mentality of eating out. A person, you know, from Manchester went all the way to Birmingham just to have a dessert. So we travel hundreds of miles. We spend 20, 30 pound petrol just to have 2, 3 pound dessert. Look at the mentality. Look at our mentality. So what did I say? This fear... For the children, we think to ourselves, no, no, we have to give them the best. And we are working day and night for them and forgetting ourselves. Like this person I met, subhanallah. So I said, you know, read salah. He goes, no, I don't have time for salah. And listen to this. What did he say? I work 16 to 18 hours daily, seven days. 16 to 18 hours. And he lives on one can of Coke and a sandwich. And his objective of life, his goal, his target of life is... And he's got five children. He wants to make sure that everyone has a freehold house. And he says, until I don't achieve that, I will continue working like this. Allahu Akbar. Look at the mentality. So what was I saying? That if we want to get nurturing our children, we have to make sure that we follow the Islamic system. Islam has taught us everything very clear. When the child is born immediately, every child who is born, after he is born, the shaitan pricks that child and he starts to cry. So if you ask a medical expert, the scientist, why did the child cry? They will say the child has come into a new environment, that's why he's crying. 
But the hadith is telling us why is he crying for? Because the shaitan has pricked the child. You might be thinking, why has the shaitan pricked that child for? Because he is saying, you and me, we are enemy. Because of your father, who? Father? Adam. Are you following me, everybody? Yeah? Adam, alayhi salatu was salam, he was the one because of which I have been taken out from Jannat. Ukhruj fa inna karajim. Get out, you are cursed. So I in the shaitan lakuma aduun fatahidu adua. In this shaitan is your enemy, regard him as your enemy. So what has Islam taught us? Listen to this. Immediately after the child is born, what do we do? We give the azan in the right ear, iqamat in the left ear. So we are counter attacking the shaitan. Shaitan is saying, I'm the greatest. You're saying, no, no, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Shaitan is saying, come to the nightclub. You're saying, hayya ala salah, come to what salah. Hayyal al falah come to a success. So we are counter attacking. You might be thinking this child, does he understand? Does he understand anything? Of course he does. Subconsciously, the scientists and the medical experts will tell, yeah, this has an effect on the child. Even when the child is in the mother's womb, the scholars mentioned that the mother should be reciting the Quran, read, she shouldn't go through stress and everything. Because that stress will have effect on the child. Negative effect. This is how important it is. So we give the azan and iqamat, we are telling the child that make sure you stay on the right path. Stay on the right path. You have to come to salah, that's the success. Then what happens is, you call a pious person, you get a date, chew the date, put the saliva in the child's mouth. Why? So that child gets the effect of the piety of the pious person. Then you cut the hair and you give sadaqah. In the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that will take away any calamities. We do the aqiqah. So, jaan ke badla jaan. You understand? You, in exchange of a soul, you give a soul. In other words, what happens is, by giving that, doing that aqiqah, it will take him away from all calamities, difficulties, all adversities. So, give him a good name. Name has an effect. So, all these things we need to keep in mind. We need to keep in mind unique names which don't have any meaning. Like one person was asking me, can we keep the name Amaya? I said, Amaya? So we look at the Google translation and it gives us the wrong. You know, if you're going to ask Mufti Google sub, then what are you going to get? You're going to get the wrong answers. I could remember one just recently, somebody says, you know, can I keep my son's name Lamin? I said, what does Lamin mean? Because he means trustworthy. So I said, where did you find which Mufti told you? Because Mufti Google sub. So I said, Achha, I understand how we got it wrong. Because Lamin, if you spell it in English, is L A M I N. If you take off the L, it's Amin. And Amin means trustworthy. So it detected the word Amin and it's given you the meaning straight away. Google has given. But Lamin doesn't have no meaning when you put the Lam in it. Are you understanding? Because whatever you input into the computer, this is what he's going to tell you. If it was so easy, then we wouldn't have gone through this hardship of become Mufti. We say, Mufti Google sabko push tero. This is a problem that we have. So Amaya means blind. You want to keep that name for your child? Another person wanted to keep Arya. I said, Arya means naked. You want to keep that name? Allahu Akbar. Rajim is in the Quran. Fastaid will lie in the Shaitan Rajim. I said, Rajim is cursed. Shaitan is talking about Shaitan is cursed. You want to keep that name? What's wrong with us? So, we need to understand that if you want to have the upbringing of the children, we need to make sure that we do that in an Islamic way. We send our children to the madrasa, we teach them. So, I was saying that tarbiya is very important. So, if we can adopt these points that I mentioned, inshallah ta'ala, and when the child is born, start from the day one. Stay to it. Azan, Iqamat, Tahmeek, Aqika, shaving of the head, naming the child. Then when the child starts to speak, the first word should be Allah. Not Abu Ammu. They'll automatically say these kind of things. Get them to start Allah. That child's mind is like a sponge. Whatever you put in, this is how it takes in. And we need to. This brain is like a USB stick. So what happens is, if there's some files already, then you have to delete the wrong files. You have to put the right files. This is the way we need to take it forward. So we need to make sure
that we do the tarbiyah of the children and we have our imam take advice from them and we need to the maktab system is of vital importance maktab is the pride of our community every child should be attending the maktab nowadays no my child he's got extra subjects from school he does uh, thai boxing he does martial arts he does these football uh, extracurricular subjects is all the sports and that's why he doesn't have time like one parent came to me because can you you know have you got any course which is one hour just one hour a week but why one hour because no my son my daughter they study for 10 hours in school so they're too tired i said for school you can have 50 hours for maktab you are looking for one hour that one hour the tazi roti the fresh bread all this else is basi roti so you are sufficing yourself with that so this is a problem we have so many courses still it's not enough for these people can you have something which is on a saturday or a sunday one hour or can you come to our house and teach our children allahu akbar that way you don't gain anything piyasa kuwa ke paas jata kuwa piyasa ke paas nahi aata we have to have that mentality to have our children being taught in the house the scholar will come and this and that they won't have that value they won't have that value imam bukhari rahmatullah alayhi when he used to be teaching hadith the amir at that time amir khalid he wanted his children to be taught separately he said no no hadith is for open for everybody general everybody has to come so he was angry he didn't like it so this is the point that we have to keep in mind we need to value our scholars we need to value our the knowledge of deen that has to come as a priority now and it's so sad let me tell you something so sad like just before you got your GCSEs and your A-level results parents were coming to us okay Mufti Sahib, you know it depends are they going to be going to the madrasa or not I said what does he mean if they got good results if they got good GCSEs and air levels they're not going to come to the madrasa because they will go to university they will do the air levels and if they have bad results then what can we do madrasa me bejdo o pehle zamana ki tarah lula lumra ko madrasa me bejdo that mentality allahu akbar if you're going to have treat the deen knowledge like this then what are we going to get we're going to get nothing so the point here is we need to value it that no deeny knowledge comes first that's the primary that's our identity as a muslim or else what's going to happen they're going to stay ignorant hakim ulama sheikh ashwali tani rahmatullahi mentions that this person at that time when people used to come from india they used to come all the way to oxford and cambridge to this would be the elite the very rich people a few of them after finishing the degree there they used to come to cambridge and oxford to study so this youngster he came and he studied at that time they spent 25000 rupees on him so when he went back unfortunately he became ill and the illness got the better of him it made him so weak and he was bedridden the parents were around his bed they were crying and he was leaving the world and the parents they were wailing and they were saying oh beta we spent 25,000 rupees on your education we haven't seen the fruits of it so that child at that moment of time just before leaving this world he says oh my father and mother by you spend listen to this by you spending 25,000 rupees you have not befriended me you have shown that you are the manifest enemy your clear enemy of mine now i could see the fire of jahannam in front of me coming and i can't save myself because i've got nothing of the deen another incident he writes this person he came and when he came when he after he finishing uh, finished his degree with flying colors he passed and at that time he they were on ship they were coming back so he stopped at Bombay port so all his relatives everybody came to welcome him so it was a month of Ramadan so they were fasting the youngster the student he was eating so they said beta it's the month of Ramadan what are you eating for Ramadan what is Ramadan what is Ramadan because it's a month of the Islamic calendar because Islamic calendar January February March April May June July August September October November December what where is Ramadan what are you talking about 
So the family, they started to cry and they left him there. They said, Allahu Akbar, if that's the situation, if that's the condition of our children, they don't, they don't even know the, what is the month of Ramadan. So this education is going to be a curse for us. I'm not going against education, the world education, the university, mashallah. If you can achieve it, very good. But not to the detriment of the Islamic knowledge. You have to achieve the Islamic knowledge adequate amount, which will save you from the fire of Jahannam. If he hasn't taught you how to read namaz, if you don't know what is halal and haram, then you're in big danger. We are at a big danger. So that's why it's very important that we need to bring our children in a proper way. Teach them the true knowledge. Get them to the maktabs. Get them become hafiz and alim. They can achieve both. It's not problematic. Just take away the social media away from them. Like parents come and they say, Mera beta karega to ek hi karega. He'll do college, university or he'll do madrasa. That's the second category of parents. One category is, I just explained. So I said to them, look, they can do both. Because no, it's going to be hard. Because bring the child to me. I said, how many hours do you spend on your social media? The child, embarrassed, he doesn't want to speak. I said, tell me the truth. Because about five, six hours daily. So I said, delete that, eradicate that, take away that, substitute that. And the child will be having enough time to do his homework for madrasa as well as school. And he'll have enough time to rest and play. So we need to put everything in proper perspective. But as I said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-ajzi wal kasli. That ask refuge in Allah from inability. I can't do it. I can't do it. No, you can't do it. You have to do it. Well, kasli, don't be lazy. Don't take shortcuts. Do it full. So if we can implement this, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. For so many other things, I actually had other few things to say, but obviously, alhamdulillah, whatever if the points that I've mentioned, if we can implement them and put that in our life, as I said, walk the talk. We have to make sure that we put it into practice, and only then it will be beneficial. If we're not going to be, we're going to go home back again. Okay, I'm doing my college university. I'm not saying don't do it, but if I'm not doing my deen, I don't even know the basic of how to read the Quran. I need to stay away, speak to my Imam. Brother Imam Sab, and I, you know, sort this out. I need to learn my Quran. There's so many le there's weekend lessons. There's so many ways we can uh, gain this knowledge. So find out and gain this knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what has been said. Wa akhru da'awan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma amin alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al anbiya wal mursaleen. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة من ذرية ربنا وتقبل دعاء ربنا اغفر لي ولوالدي وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم جعل أولادنا أبرارا وأتقيا اللهم جعل أولادنا أبرارا وأتقيا اللهم أنبتهم في الإسلام نباتا حسنا اللهم إنا نرجوك ألا تدع لنا في مقامنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا كربا إلا نفست ولا دينا إلا أديت ولا سؤالا إلا أعطيت ولا دعاء إلا أجبت ولا مريض إلا شفيته وعافيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة هي لك رضا ولنا فيها صلاح إلا أعنتنا على قضائها يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل هذا المسجد لخدمة الدين ودعوه الدين وتبليغ الدين يا رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى accept this gathering الله سبحانه وتعالى make our children obedient to you الله سبحانه وتعالى make them the lovers of the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى descend your tranquility your peace your serenity on this gathering الله سبحانه وتعالى give us life upon iman give us death upon iman and raise us with our beloved prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on the day of judgment الله سبحانه وتعالى accept the khidmat of this masjid the imams of this masjid the committee of this masjid all the brothers and sisters who have come today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accept each and every one of us, give us success in this world and the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make our children ambassadors of deen. Allah, don't make them the obstacles of deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't take away the iman of any of our children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us life upon iman, death upon iman, and raise us with our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma rizzuqna murafaqatan nabiyyi fil jannah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, kullama dhakrahu dhakirun. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, كلما غفل عن ذكره الغافلون سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين الحمد لله رب العالمين
Ha 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 